marketing. Marketing is the lifeblood of any business and is key to your success, uh, whatever business you're in. Uh, hey, everybody, Ben Nelson, the Everyday Real Estate Investor here. Uh, we are going to talk about marketing today because uh, we've talked about this a couple other times in the past, but marketing is, as I said, the lifeblood of any company. And without the proper things in place, you will uh, not be able to drive the revenue that you need to sustain your business. And uh, I think we're starting to see this and, you know, the, the market has been really pretty darn robust the last several years. And we are seeing, you know, a decline in pending sales. We're seeing a lot of stuff going on in the market. I, uh, you know, I'm not going to talk about the market today, although uh, stay tuned for next week because we are going to dive into the market. I'm going to have an awesome guest on uh, to talk about that. Uh, and we're going to dive deep into where we're at in the market and just kind of some forecasting. So uh, definitely tune into that one. Uh, but uh, again, we're, we've seen all of these things uh, happen over the last few years. Just you really didn't have to do a lot as long as you weren't, you know, hiding somewhere. If you if you were doing kind of some basic things, um, you were able to drum up business because there was just a lot out there happening. It was a very active and robust market. So uh, right now, it's people are being exposed for not having a plan in place, for not having these things. Um, you know, set up in a way that are are set up for long term success. So let's chat about it right now. I'm going to throw out four uh, of the biggest marketing mistakes, in, so that you can make sure that you are having uh, the the right systems, the right things set up, and uh, and all that for success uh, for your business. So let's get into it. Uh, the first one is uh, not having a plan, um, and not having a plan is you know, that is, this is where you have to start. And, you know, people, people will really get, and I've done this, all of these things again. And when I share these on the podcast, are, a lot of times they're from my own mistakes and my own experience. So just humbly putting that out there that a lot of these things I've, I've done myself and have, have learned the hard way. Um, so, you know, if you're, if you're going out trying to market yourself, but you really don't have any plan, you're like, ah, I'll do a little bit of Facebook advertising. I'll throw some letters out there. I'll, um, you know, maybe put some postcards out. I'll, I'll do some social media posts. And, uh, you know, you're trying all these things, but you really don't have, there's no consistency, there's no con congruency to it. It's just kind of tossed out there here and there, and, and they don't have any interconnectedness. And they're, and they're, you're just putting these things out there kind of on a random basis. It can work in the right market, but it is not going to produce the results that it could. And, in tougher markets, it doesn't it doesn't work, uh, and it's really easy for things to fall off, uh, not happen, and you just don't have any marketing because you get busy. So if you don't have a plan in place, you get busy. Hey, I've got you know deal flow coming in. I don't really need to do any of this stuff. Uh, that is the long term death of a, of a business if you are living off the low hanging fruit and you're not going out because you know and doing the things that you need to do with a marketing plan. So. Um, Having no plan, sporadic in any aspect, is is one of the things that can kill your results. And again, even if you're having some, uh, you are not going to have the results that you could have. So um, this starts with defining your target market. Who are you trying to message to? Who are you marketing to? What what neighborhoods? What areas? And again, we're talking about real estate. This is true for any business. Uh, if you don't have a target and you're trying to, uh, well, there, I'm going to just message it to the world. You're going to spend a lot of time and a lot of money and you're going to sift through a lot and you're just wasting effort and you're wasting money if you're not really dialed in on who it is that you want to market to. Um, again, not having an overall marketing plan in place. Like this is my marketing plan. This is my vision. These are the things we're going to do. This is the type of materials we're going to put out there. This is the messaging. This is the um, neighborhood, or this is our demographic, having that full plan in place. This is how often we're going to send and post and all of those things uh, need to be planned out so that you can have something to follow and follow through. Otherwise, again, it's inconsistent or it doesn't, uh, it just doesn't happen. Um, and then not measuring results. Well, it's hard to measure results if you don't even have a plan in the first place. So that is key because you don't know if it's working if you're not measuring it to some degree, right? You got to you gotta measure what is actually working so you can make adjustments moving forward. Um, and again, without a plan, how do you do that? Um, and then 
I added this as I was uh, thinking through this. This could be its own thing, but you know, not having systems in place. That to me is part of a plan as well. You have to have, you could have leads coming in, but if you don't have a plan for what that looks like when those leads and opportunities come in, they're going to fall through the cracks and you're going to miss those opportunities. And so you need to have funnels and systems and processes and all of those things in place as, as part of your plan for what, this is how we're going to generate leads. This is the plan to do that. And then here's what happens after we generate those leads. Here's the plan uh, moving forward to culture those, uh, those connections and create business out of it. So number one, have a plan. You got to have a plan. Number two, I said this word a couple times in the planning section, but consistency, being inconsistent is a, it's the, again, another killer of a marketing plan. So if you don't even have a plan in the first place, you know, you're just kind of tossing stuff out there and now you're inconsistent with it. Now, now you've got two strikes against you, right? How, how can you possibly, you're, you're getting lucky is what you're doing. You're hoping you hit people at the right time with the right message. And that's, it's a hope. It's a hope and a prayer. It's not a plan. Um, so inconsistency, this is inconsistent. I'm going to talk about three different pieces of inconsistency and there's, there's more than this, but these are three big ones for sure. Inconsistency of materials. What are you sending out now? You can have different types of things that you're sending, but be strategic about it. If you're just, well, I'll, you know, making this up on, as you go, I'm going to send out some postcards today. And then, you know, next month you're like, oh yeah, I got to send something out. I'm going to send out a letter. And you're just not really thinking it through. You don't really have a, a systematic approach to it. It's just, it's inconsistent. Again, you're just, you're, you're going to hurt your results by doing that. Um, so you can mix it up a little bit. And I actually feel like that's a good thing to do because some people respond better to postcards and a quick message. And some people respond better to, you know, a personal, more personal letter. Um, so, you know, you're going to hit different people um, in different ways uh, in your target market, but, uh, but have a plan behind it. Um, again, inconsist inconsistency of timing. Uh, so, you know, if you're trying to put the, if you don't have that plan in place, you know, it's, Hey, I, I'm going to hit him the middle of the month uh, every month in my, in my target area, whatever that plan is, you know, if you don't have that plan in place, it's just not going to happen. And you're, Oh no, it's the middle of the month. I was going to, I was supposed to get something out. Now you're trying to put, uh, now you're trying to put that together and, um, you don't have, uh, you have the, you, you know, you're not going to hit them on the right at the right timing because you're, you're just not. And so you don't have the, the consistency of timing. People want to, you, you know, you got to hit people, you got, they got to see it on a regular basis at a, at the same time. And again, this goes with social media, mailing, uh, whatever you're doing, that consistency of timing is, is important. Um, in then inconsistency of message. So this one is huge. Uh, maybe even the biggest of the three, but it is, this is very, very important. If, if you don't have, if people don't have a clear idea of what you're offering, um, and if it's changing or confusing it, your message is and, and, Hey, this is what we do. This is what we're offering. Um, this is how we can help you. They'll, they'll never respond because it's, they're confused. They don't, and people that are confused don't do anything. Uh, so, it, and if they don't even have any idea what it is, you, how you can help them, um, they, then they're not going to respond. They're just, they're just not going to, because what's the reason they don't, they don't even know what you do. So inconsistency of message is probably the biggest killer of those three. You definitely want to be consistent with timing and with materials and, and what you're sending out and have that plan and, and everything in place. But if your message is confusing, all of that stuff uh, is not going to matter. Um, and that's going to, that leads us into the next one. We're going to focus on that, that messaging aspect. It's so important that, uh, you know, that's my number three is poor or inconsistent messaging. Uh, and Without spending too much time on this, I, I go back to um, I, if you have not seen Simon Sinek's uh, TED Talk, How Great Leaders Inspire Action, and if you have not read his book, Start With Why, you have to. The TED Talk is, I think, 10 or 15 minutes, and the book is a really easy read. Those are must watch, much must watch and must read. You have to go do that, and I would encourage you to go do that. Even pause my podcast right now and go watch it right now because it is super important. And the 
the crux of what he talks about in both of those is that people don't buy or do work with you because of what you do. They buy why you do it. And if your message doesn't portray why you're doing what you're doing and how it affects them and changes their life and benefits them, your messaging is the wrong message. Uh, and I, I wish I, I was actually going to go look for it. So if you were watching on the video here, I could show it. I would have, of course, you know, crossed off the name or whatever, but it was years and years ago, but I found, you know, I was door knocking myself and uh, found a, a postcard left on a very rundown property and it was a wholesaler. They were looking to, um, they were looking to find deals that they could wholesale to, um, to, you know, buyers that are investors that are looking for product. Great. That's awesome. They're being proactive. They're doing the right things. But wow, their message on their postcard was awful. And I can't, I mean, maybe people responded to it, but it had to have been such a small fraction because the messaging on there was all about the wholesaler. It had nothing to do with how it helped the homeowner. It had nothing to do with, hey, you know, how, how can I help you get from where you are to where you're trying to go? Hey, I don't know if you have some sort of, you know, life circumstance, how can I help you get this property off of your plate and, and move forward and move on with your life? You know, the, the message, you know, Hey, I'm here to help. How can I help you? What, what is your, uh, what is your circumstance? What is your, what are your situation and how can I help you, um, solve your problem? That's the messaging that we want to create. Um, this messaging was all, this is what I'm doing. I have to offer really cheap. I mean, this is really what they said is like, I have to, I have to pay very little money for it because I have to make money. And here's, I mean, literally that was the messaging was I need to make money. So I'm going to offer you a low offer. Why would somebody respond to that? I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't. It's, it's, I mean, borderline insulting, right? You're telling them up front, Hey, I'm going to offer people already don't want to call you because that's what they're afraid of. Now you're telling them that that's what you're going to do is give them a low offer because you have to make money. They don't care. Actually, they, and I, and I will say, okay, so up front, they do not care. They care about their situation and what they need to do. I will say if you approach it the right way and you build that rapport, uh, people generally don't care that you're making money. They want you to make money because you're helping them. But if you lead with that, you're done. You're done. If you make it all about you and about the money that you need to make, they're not going to call you. They don't want to talk to you. It's all about you. If you make it about them and you're helping them and you're solving their problem, they want you to succeed as well. So you have to flip that. Um, so the message is super, super important. You have to let people know how you can help them. Why should they be reaching out to you instead of somebody else? You know, don't make it about you, make it about them and, and how you're going to help them get from where they are to where they're trying to go, whatever that is. Um, so again, Simon Sinek, definitely watch that TED Talk, How Great Leaders Inspire Action. Uh, read the book, Start With Why. Great stuff. Um, it'll, it, if, it, if you're not already doing it, it'll, it's going to change the messaging that you put out there um, and it's going gonna to help you get better results. So, um, so, and I'm going to throw, so this is what I, I, I hate to do this, but, um, you know, I, I see companies, big builders, I'm not going to name the builder, but, um, you can, I guess you could Google it and figure it out after I say this, but I see billboards everywhere with the message, America's number one home builder. Um, and this is like a, to me, a perfect example of, of terrible message. Like nobody cares. Nobody cares that you're America's number one home builder. They just don't. That's not why they buy your product. They buy your product because it's there and it's available and um, inventory is low and uh, you know all sorts of other reasons. I'm not saying that they're a bad builder. I'm not saying any of that stuff. It's like, but it's not the reason people buy your product. It's not like, oh, who, who, sh who should I buy a home from? Oh, whoever the number one home builder is, that's gonna can, that, that that's who I'm gonna buy from. They don't care. They really don't care. Um, so those kinds of messages are just not effective and. Um, the thing is, is like companies that are big, big companies, big home builders, big any type of company. Um, if you're a huge company and you're having sales and success in that way, you don't think about it because it's like, well, we're selling, we're selling products, so it must be working. Well, again, you can have success, uh, you know, accidentally or in spite of poor messaging. Um, 
So uh, anyway, I just, I always throw that one out there because I think it's just, it's such a poor message. So those are a couple examples of um, very poor messages that you put out there. You make it all about you as, as the company or as the person, you know, the investor or whatever, instead of about the client that you're trying to serve um, and leading with that and then putting it together in a way that um, helps you and helps them, right? Uh, what you're offering is irrelevant if it's not messaged in a way that uh, shows them how it helps them and how it affects them and changes their life and, and makes it better. Um, so, um, okay, last one here is not understanding the difference between brand, building your brand and lead generation. And these are two very different types of marketing. And it's really important to understand the difference because if you're trying to generate leads and you're doing things that are building a brand and not really generating leads, uh, then uh, you're going to be frustrated and disappointed and you're going to be not driving the lead uh, volume that you want, right? So um, I, I feel like you really need both uh, to, you, know, you have to overlap those, right? If you're marketing to a specific neighborhood, you should be doing things to drive leads, you know, may, you know, some sort of, you know, marketing with a call to action. Um, there's all sorts of ways to do that, you know, on social media with lead capture and, you know, you're leading with value and, and offering and, and gathering people's information, um, driving calls, things like that versus, you know, say like a billboard or, you know, the shopping cart thing, you know, putting your name on that or, um, just general, hey, your local realtor um, or or investor or whatever type type of things like, hey, I'm your local neighborhood expert. That's may not may not drive leads per se directly anyway. Like it it could, um, but uh, you have to do some of that, right? Yeah, we want to be recognized as an expert in the area, as a leader in your industry, all of those things. But that is very different than a. Uh, a plan to actually drive, this is going to bring leads in and this is how it's going to bring it in. We're going to offer this thing, uh, this this um, value proposition, and we're going to put it out there. And uh, this is going to, we're going to capture people's information as they inquire about it. And now those are, those are leads that are in our system. So two very different things. One is, one is, this is who we are. Here's my face. We want to see, you know, you want people to see you all over the place so they can connect that with the lead generation side of it. So I, you need both, you need the brand awareness, brand building uh, side, and you need lead generation and they should overlap each other so that they can work together and, and be more effective together. They're going to drive more leads when you have that brand awareness as well. A um, couple of thoughts that I'm going to leave you with after going over those four, um, again, the four were, uh, you know, have a plan, be consistent, uh, have the right messaging and understand the difference between building your brand and actually generating leads. Uh, I, I, you know, Gary V is a big name out there. Uh, he, he talks a lot about marketing and he, uh, has put things out there that I, I totally agree with this. And it's fairly recently changed my perspective on marketing. And he says, uh, to real estate agents, um, the mess. I mean, no, I know he tells this to everybody, but uh, to real estate agents, he says you're not you're not a real estate real estate agent. You're not out there selling houses. You're selling yourself, basically. You're he's, he says you're a media company first, and you're a real estate agent second, or you're a, a media company first, and you're a fill in the blank second, right? Um, and that and that kind of goes back to, um, you know, people don't buy what. You do that by why you do it, right? So you you have to put yourself out there, and and you have to you have to create that content and you have to create that messaging. That is what you're in the business of to drive business to what it is that you actually do. Hopefully that makes sense. Gary Vee says it a lot better than me. But you're a you're a media company first. You're a whatever your business is second. Um, again, people don't care what you do. People don't care that you're the best. People care how you can help them get from where they are to where they want to go. Those things can help you. Um, hey, here's what I can help you, how I can help you get where you're going and, and achieve your goals, things like that. And oh, by the way, we're also the number one uh, co company doing this in the area. That's fine. 
um, it could support you, but it shouldn't be your messaging. It should should not be your main messaging. People don't care. Um, and then Grant Cardone, I uh, probably put this out there uh, recently as well, uh, said it very well recently too. Um, you're worth how well you're known. Your value is it, it, for your business, for the revenue that you're driving is uh, equal to how well you're known. So you have to be putting yourself out there. You have to be marketing. Without marketing, you, you can't be, you know, in the real estate in industry, they say, don't be a secret agent, right? If nobody knows you're a real estate agent or what what you do or a real estate investor, uh, it's very hard to get business, isn't it, right? So uh, how well you're known and how well uh, your solution that you provide to clients is known is going to directly be uh, go, go to that bottom line and in, in the revenue that you are driving and the property you're driving to your business. So I hope these things have been helpful. Again, definitely uh, make some changes in your marketing. If you're not doing these things, if you're not being consistent, if you don't have a plan in place, do that. Make sure you've got that plan in place. Change your messaging. Try try some different things if you have to. Um, see what, do some A-B testing. See what gets better results. Um, really tweak what it is that you're doing. Really, if you haven't spent the time to even hone your message, you've got to do that first. Make sure that message is clear, concise, compelling uh, to your audience so that it drives them to action. Um, next week, we are going to be talking about the market. There is a lot going on in the market, or there's maybe less going on in the market, depending on how you look at it, right? Uh, pending sales are down, things are happening, Fed is doing uh, all these things with rates. It's affecting mortgage rates. We've got economies in question. We got lots of stuff going on. So we are going to talk about uh, that next week. You're not going to want to miss it. Uh, my friend Mike Nuss is going to be on the show with me. Uh, super smart guy. He's going to have a lot to talk about both on the local level uh, here in the Portland uh, metro area market, but we'll absolutely talk about macro level because if you're not in Portland, then you don't care about Portland, but we'll use it as an example. Um, and you can take that and then take the macro level aspects and uh, apply it to your own market. And I know it's going to help you. You're not going to want to miss that interview with Mike. So uh, until next time, go out and do whatever you have to do to tweak your message, get your message out there, make it the best message that you can to get the best results for yourself and make it a great day.